Hello there. Morning and welcome. I say morning because it is morning here in the UK. It's quarter to ten. This will be quite a shortish video because I've got to be somewhere. Well, it's actually online at eleven o'clock. But um, I just want to get something done. I was missing in action yesterday. I visited a friend. It was lovely. And it's getting back into the rhythm of life as normal. But before... I say thank you. No, before I start drawing, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you who subscribed to my channel. I appreciate you all so very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so if you enjoy what I see. It does make a difference and um, it lets YouTube know that people enjoy what I'm doing, same as the thumbs up buttons, and it gets shared with other people who may find this of value to them, which is my whole aim here. It's to help and inspire people to draw, to create, and not to be invested in perfection. And just try things out, see where it goes. So thank you very much. That's all I'm going to say for joining me. Also, what you can see in front of me here is a selection of tools I may use, I may not. I have got some coloured fine liner pens. I've got sort of like a dusky purple colour. I've got a violety colour here which actually is a paler shade of this different brand but I think they'll work together this is a, a sort of like a, a yellowy brown and this one's another pinky colour and it's no 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 comparison to the lid you, you really do and this one these are Artezas the others are there's a chameleon mark here and this one is a Stadler Triplus um, I always try them out on paper and I I did that though you won't tell which is which on here because I want to use these pens again because um, I absolutely love this this warm browny pinky yellowy tone as a as a background it's becoming my thing I think um, I've also got a white jelly roll I've got an 0103 fine liner I've got a pencil and eraser which aren't strictly zentangle but then I'm not exactly a zentangle kind of girl um, I like zentangle but I tend to put my own twist on it as you know, if you've been watching my videos, I have been working with monograms and I do love them. But today I think I may need to do something a little bit different. And what I think I'm going to do, I say what I think I'm going to do. Let's, let's just, instead of taking a pencil, let's see where my pen wants to go. And I may, actually I may very well, um, I did a, a lowercase a the other day, so let's do a lowercase b and I'm going to make it nice and chunky. Now I'm into monograms, I, I love lettering anyway and it's been a long time coming where I've been trying my hand at finding out how hand lettering can work for me and I'm beginning to get there I think in with different styles and different ways of doing things. And you have to try things out until you work out what is you. I'll tell you what I could do with a thicker pen. For colouring bits in, have I got a thicker one easily to hand? Oh yes, we have an 08 in a tray there. Uh, faffing around with an 03 forever. And it's easier then for me to adjust these lines. And this is perfectly fine to do and I do want this lovely bold shape here. I may change the top there a little bit. We'll see. Moment, it's it's an interesting shape. It's almost a me shape, as in me being me. And I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to change the bottom here a little bit and have it mirroring that at the top. So I'm going to have to do a fair amount of sculpting with this. a bit better. The paper I'm working on is this Sea White of Brighton's um, all media paper. So it's a bit thinner than the other paper I've used recently which is the Artway mixed media paper, the eco one that's made from recycled coffee cups. 
which I do like actually. I really do quite like it. it but it's not the most pleasant paper to draw on in some ways. And it's not the most pleasant to use alcohol markers on, which are my go-to cool, my go-to tool for colour. My go-to ghoul for yeah, my go-to tool. Oh, yeah, I was getting all my beginnings mixed up, and I knew what I was going to say, but I can't remember. My go-to ghoul for gulla, perhaps. So I do want to make this more of a rounded shape here. And again here. It's a bit thicker on the bottom than the top, but I'm happy with that. So I think that would work as a, a letter B. I'm going to adjust this slightly. I'm going to adjust that slightly. And I'm quite happy with that kind of shape. I like these little kickouts at the top and bottom here like this. They're interesting shapes. They've got the potential to have all kinds of things stuffed in there. And in fact, I think I may actually start that process because I've been watching videos from the Zentangle Project Pact 15, which is where they use letters almost as strings um, you know the the shape that's laid down to start a pattern off or to form patterns so if I do a lot of letters then you know that's what's going to happen for a while but also there's nothing stopping you putting something else and using the same principles so I've got these lovely random shaped circles here. I like to put circles inside them but I'm putting little petals inside as if they are little flowers that are closed up for the night. They've gone to sleep. Have you ever heard of a flower, flower clocks? They were a thing in parks and some parks still have them. And the gardeners would plant, um, you know, set the, the circular pattern, the circular clock, in sections with different flowers that open and close at different times of the day. So you can actually use them to roughly tell the time. You can't tell them to the minute, but, you know, you think, oh, these lot are open, so it must be about midday. And they, they would be arranged almost like a clock and they'd often put, you know, the letter, numbers in for the hours and so on. And um, I always found that fascinating as a child because I saw them. I don't think I've seen one for quite a while recently, but... Okay, I'm going to start putting an aura around this. I may be regretting putting those balls at the end here, but I find I often regret my choices as I'm going along and then afterwards I just, you know, have to keep myself going and then eventually I'll work it out and go, okay, that worked and off we go again. So I'm using this dusky purpley colour here for a bit of contrast. And I am going to start to add patterns around here. Now my temptation is to do diva dance, which is an easy one. But I do want to add some other things because these shapes beg for things that swoop off. So I think some flux type shapes would be quite nice here. I'm going to add some rounding and I might add some weight under here actually. So that works nicely. I think this is a nice place for one. But this is probably a nice place for a cluster. So let's work with those. And get all of this going. And I'm guessing that if I have a cluster there, I really need to cluster them 
wherever I put them because it doesn't feel right otherwise when you've got one on its own and the others are all paired up. I don't want lonely, lonely leaves. So that's quite nice. <coughs> Excuse me. We had rain overnight, which is lovely. I had a fitful night's sleep. Um, I've had enough sleep. I feel quite tickety-boo. Um, but I did wake quite often and I could hear the rain. Of course, the air smells all lovely and fresh and the dampness of the leaves is catching what sunlight is breaking through and making them a nicer colour. And the leaves are beginning to be tinted with that golden brown colour that presages autumn, you know, the changing seasons, which is, I, I just love it, love this time of year. Okay. So I've done a whole host of these here. And yeah, the, some of the lines are a bit clumsy, but it is rather early in the morning for me. <laughs> Need to be, go back to bed at some point today, I think. So I'm going to I'm going to do, leave that as it is. Although part of me does want to let's have a look. Carry on adding these around because the some bits look a little bit bare. But I know that if I aura these, they will sort of like all tied together and it will give me an interesting kind of shape around the edge as well. Oops. So I'll just go here and just round in between them. I think these, this one could extend up a little bit more. Just get these ones going, getting smaller and smaller towards there. That works. Nice progression rounded in between them. So I'll do that now. There. I think I'm going to leave that as it is, but I am going to said Aura is Aura is your friend, they say. If in doubt Aura. Well I am kind of in doubt here but I'm going to use an aura before I do anything else. It's getting very frilly and it no longer really looks like a letter B in some ways. It's interesting to me how drawing in colour here, which is something I've never really done and it's only recently I've started doing more of this. Um, I think things are beginning to click into place in my head. It, it can take a while. That's why persevering with things is so important. But also taking a break and coming back. It um, really does help. As you see things a bit more clearly. And in my case anyway, my mind works on things in its own little way in the background. Okay. Now if I've ordered round the outside... I need to aura around the inside. There's a better shape there. And actually, I've got enough space here just to tidy that up a little bit. There we go. So I've got that lovely shape in there. This is why my mind's thinking about what to do on the outside. But of course, I'm going to fill this shape with these lovely leafy flexes. Because they do really fill you know, circles quite elegantly. So I've got mine chasing each other around the circle. But I've got some space in the middle. I could fill in with colour but I'm going to fill it in with tiny little circles called which is the tangle pattern they call tipple 
mine are getting quite organised here, so I'm going to vary some of the sizes a little bit. I can get a bit too precise about things and then everything looks a bit manufactured. So that's quite nice. And that automatically lifts these up, doesn't it? As if they are um, beginning to um, dome upwards. Okay, I'm going to add some more flux around here. Just going to see how it all falls. Sometimes it does like to make like little bushes of itself. That's how I see these, like little clusters that form like little bushes. And that's fine, I can work with that. In fact, we can just probably have another little bush here of flux that overlaps these others in that kind of way. Again, I'm just going to add some rounding where these little flexes meet, just to even that out. I think I'm going to leave this one as it is for now, because that still keeps some elements of the B shape, if you get what I mean, because we've got like a strong line here and then this is beginning to just bulge out that little bit. So what I'm doing here with this order is rather than following the curves too closely, I'm sort of like trying to smooth over the curves, which is the purpose of rounding in many ways. I'm going to do the same now on this one is where I'm just going to fill the biggest dents in with some ink or the most awkward ones. So that one was an awkward shape. I'm going to put some ink here because I think that would make some sense. And here it would make some sense. And perhaps here because I've, that's where I've joined it. A little bit there. Oh, I made a mess there of the line. Okay, and then I'm going to do one last aura in this pinky colour. I love these dusky, vintagey colours more than the brighter ones these days. That's for sure. Right, there we go. So there's there's that so far. I am going to go back to my O3. And I'm going to put a black aura around this. And each time you do this, the line will become smoother, so I'll end up with a kind of pebbly shape. I'm not entirely sure this is actually what I'd like. Certainly not what I envision, maybe. Actually, I didn't envision anything other than I was going to draw something. So I have this here. And that black line tend, creates almost like a lovely border. Now, I did draw pencil lines on here using a ruler as a guide to how far I want, you know, um, kind of as a, not as a hard and fast limit, but kind of that suggestion of, let's try and keep as much as we can within this space, but it's okay if you spill outwards, Angela, which is why I tend to do these days. So I've got that going on here. So I'm going to start putting some patterns along the side and here, I'm putting in these lovely U, U's all joined together, or ends if you prefer to work the other way round. And that will create the edge, or part of the edge here. I don't want to go all the way to the bottom, I want to stop a little bit shy of the bottom of the, the B pebble. And I am going to go and fill these little sections in quickly. Like this. I'm 
That gives a very definite line here. The pencil line is my guide, but it doesn't necessarily have to be hard and fast. It's not going to be perfectly straight. It's hand adding this ink by hand. And some of these are a bit taller than the line. Some are a bit shorter. So there'll be some wibbles and wobbles along the way. And wibbles and wobbles I'm happy with. Okay, I am going to put some semicircles in here filled with ink. Well, I say semicircles, but you know what I mean. They're sort of like arc shapes. They're not really semicircles. And just fill them just with black. And I will no doubt use a jelly roll pen, white jelly roll, to add some dots to this, some highlights later on. But not now. I'm going to give the ink a chance to dry. Otherwise, the jelly roll will pick the pigment up. Quite dense patterning going on here. Or dense, dense black ink. It's a nice contrast to the pale colour and the more frilly, lacy, I suppose, kind of pattern around that letter B. Now, they may not have coloured these perfectly for speed, but I can always come back. I always come back and fill things in anyway and tidy things up. That's what I do. So that is looking quite nice, possibly. I'm never quite sure about these things, so... I'm going to start having things growing from... this inner, it's not inner is it, it's from this um, hopefully I'm going to get them looking like they're growing from behind the pebble. Just a little line, it's a bit wider at the bottom, I'm trying to make it look a bit like a stem. It's a mooka in the way I like to draw them, which is with that lovely round head and the little circle inside. So I'm going to have one going off in this direction. And don't worry, it's not going to be all about mooka. I do plan to get some other things in, but I just want to split this outer space up a little bit. So there we are. So that joins back there and I can give it some weighting there, make that a little bit rounder there, put that little split in, thicken the line there a little bit and we'll get that going on there. It always feels awkward when there's just two of them so I want to add a third one and I'm going to do that by drawing one here and have it going just behind this one. So again I'm just going to pop that kind of little motif in there. I'm going to fill that all in with black. Round that little bit. A little bit of weight on the bottom there. And then that gives me, like here I've got this little space here and I think this space that makes sense to fill this in this way, to carry this on up to this point, because the line I'm going to use here is here. I don't know if you can see, I'm deliberately adding almost like little notches. Oops, that shouldn't have gone through there. Naughty me. So that's beginning to look... Um, nice and interesting so okay so I want to add some other things in and I do like flowers so I'm going to start by drawing my flower center which I nearly always do like this I hope I wasn't off camera with these oops 
and see where I've gone through the mucha. I will fill these spaces in in a moment, or start to. So, have a look at the time. Oh, it's only just past 10 o'clock, which is good. So let's add some petals. These will be nice because they, again, it ties in the shape here with these, but I'm using the same shape in a different way. Instead of putting black in the middle though, because these are flowers and I do want them a bit on the lighter area side, I'm just going to put some stamen in. I have a little bit of one poking out there, I think. And I'm going to weight the lines, the left and the bottoms, and round in between the petals just to complete that nice shape. I like that. Okay, so I am going to do another one. There's probably another two. I'm going to do another one here. So I'll do this one a bit quicker. So these lines, you can see where I've added the line thickness. I'm going to choose a place to draw my first petal. I'm just going to circle around this. I'm not too worried if there's a big gap there because I'm going to add rounding and I can fill that in and it will look fine. So weight to the bottom and the left of the line and we'll round in between them, the petals. So here I've got a big gap, I'll just fill it in with black. The gap disappears and because it's consistent with others It'll look fine. It's a good lesson that I perhaps should have turned my paper as I was working. I'm not so good at doing that at times. Well, most of the time actually. But we get there. Okay. And then I'm going to draw another one here. Just starting to extend the patterns and designs further down the page. I'm going to get some bigger gaps so it'll end, the, more of them will end up looking like this one. Almost like the petals are webbed. But that's all well and good. It's fine. It's Sunday morning here. It's a lovely cool breeze coming in, but the air is still quite warm. It feels warm. So there we go. And then my little stamen. Just like that. I do like to put some flowers, or oh flowers, leaves with flowers. So I'm going to put one big one down into the corner here. And that will just be the one leaf, possibly, for all of these. And with leaves, I do like to aura them, like so. And this is my latest thing I like to do with leaves is put a rice shape at the point, or a, a mini leaf, plain leaf, and um, just join it like that. But then I will put some with my O1. I'm going to use this leaf shape as the guide for the veins. So I'm just ordering here. I could break this up and leave some um, sparkle highlights that way. But today I'm just going to do it all with one colour. Which I think will work quite nicely. 
Right, I am going to just do a tiny bit of corner rounding in places, like so, and like so, and here, and here. So much easier to do with a finer pen. But I do also need to, I do want to weight my lines. So I want this line here to be heavier, and a little bit of this until it starts to curve upwards. And then, where it starts to curve upwards, I'm going to make this one that little bit thicker. And I'm also going to have a little bit of thickness there. I think this one I will just do there. So I quite like that. Now I do want to have some extra sections here. And I am thinking about how I can do this. So I'm not going to do Mooka, I'm going to, I'm not, I can't remember what this one is called. It's similar, but it's slightly different. So what I'm doing here is I'm going in an arc and then at the end I'm drawing a complete circle. My hand's in the way. So you can see I've drawn a complete circle around. And then I'm going to go back, ordering the circle and the outside of this line. So it's similar to Mooka, but it's not quite the same. I think it does, I think it has been given a different name, but I, I can't remember what it is. But, but I just think that is just something that's just that little bit different. Which way do I want to go? That way or that? I think this way will feel bit more natural. So I've just gone down and around and then I'm going to go around back up here. Got an odd way, odd connection there and I might just pop another one in here like so. And go back and around. So it tucks in behind this one, and I am going to fill that with black there. And then I'll do another one just to fill this space in, like so. And I'll go back and around. I'm looking at these spaces and I'm thinking, right, I'm going to fill them all in with black because that would make some sense here. So I've done some with a lot of black. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Do I want to do one somewhere else? Possibly. I'm not entirely sure. As I've said, these I'm, I'm mostly using to split all of this big space up into smaller sections that I can work with and fill with different patterns. So here I'm going to fill that with black. That makes sense now, or a bit of sense at least anyway. So that'll work nicely. Okay, and inside each of these, I think I'm going to pop a little bead, a little black pearl. And that again will tie it nicely with those bigger sections of black around them. As I talk, I can see how much I try to repeat things in my drawings whether it's using similar motifs or um, you know, similar kinds of shapes in a different way, it gives everything a bit of a coherence, like they belong together. So I've got this little gap here, and I'm going to fill this little gap on this side here, between the flowers and the leaf, with these little beads. Or little 
pearls that have got an aura around them. And then I'll just fill the in between where that line goes. So again, we've got that area of black over here. Okay. So the last thing I want to do really before I start doing some other stuff is I do think I need to pop leaves uh, in this section. But they don't need to be as big as that one. And for speed, I'm just going to draw this in and this in. I will add all of those lines afterwards. I am just going to pop one in here and they will overlap. And I'm fine with that to happen because that's how they would be in nature. Just round my corners and make the bottoms and the lines that with that little v-shape so that works and very quickly I'll just put some make the line darker at the left and bottom and then inside at the top and the right oops that's got a bit thick at the bottom it'll be fine And there. There we go. So that's beginning to look interestingly nice, I guess. Part of me wants to bring one of these around and draw them on the top there. Would that work? I don't know. I don't know. So I almost feel that this is sat too far on the top and I want something to come around and in here. So perhaps I can. Let's do one like this. It's not perfect, but what I do have that can help me later on is a white gel pen that I can use to erase the lines and have that as if it's over the top. Because that's quite mag you know, gel pens are quite magic in that respect. So don't ever think that you can't make things the way you want them. Because you can. I do need to leave the ink to dry though before I do this and I'm more likely to dot it on to cover those lines up than I am to draw over them because there's less chance of um, anything showing through. Of course these stems could be translucent or transparent but I don't think so. I'm just going to do that. And this one here, I'm going to leave the, the lines under here I think. No, we, we're going to fill it with black like I have the others. So it's that makes more sense to be part of this pattern. So that's interesting. And perhaps here I will get this one drawn around like so. And erase those lines. So I've got that going on there which is very interesting, to say the least. OK, I do want something that will... Actually, no, I'm going to leave this one down here. But I think I'm going to draw the line in. Like so. OK, how are we doing for time? 40 minutes, not bad. So I've got the basic bones of all of this out. So I'm now looking for the colours I want to use. I have got sand dollar, I've got pearl. 
which are the two my two go-to ones I'm hoping I'll be able to buy these individually from Arteza because I have a feeling these are going to be my go-to's that I will want so so I'm just going to go around these here because I'm going to start with this biggest section because I want to put something in here that will contrast with the rather organic feel of everything here and the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, I think, to push the this this background back here on the um, the letter B, and to add some shadow to it because I just think that would be quite nice. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but I am thinking about it. I'm just thinking, should I have put... Oh, we're okay. It's not coming through. It's coming through, but it's not coming through in huge amounts so that they will... come through onto my mat. Okay, I'm scratching around here. This is what chisel tips are made for. Filling in large swathes of colour. You can see how pinky it goes down and where it's drying, it's drying to that lovely pale browny colour. Isn't that lovely? Okay. I have got here the sand dollar, which is a darker tone. It's quite a bit darker when it goes on, but it does dry. Oops. That's okay, that can be fixed. All of these can be fixed. Okay, let me just use this just to feather this out a little bit, blend it in, get it moving this away. Hopefully. I think it will. Because enough alcohol marker here it hasn't dried completely but it will just smooth this over and blend it out this isn't marker paper so it's not the best to use for this but it, it's adequate and of course it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not remaining as this it's going to change so that's okay the other thing i've got is i've got a colorless blend they're called it's called a blender but they really should be called erasers so I'm just going to pop that there and that will take away a lot of that colour. There we go. So I've got this here and I really do fancy doing quite a square pattern here. Now, I'm just going to check which pen it was I'd like to use because this one, this is this this here is that colour when it's dried. And this shows up very ghost-like. This one is a bit bolder, it's a bit pinker, but I'm not entirely sure I want that. This one is the purple I started with, which is too strong for what I'm thinking of here. And I have this one, which is a paler version of that. And I think, oh no, I've got this one as well, which is the it's a brownier colour, which sort of ties in, but I think I might go with this paler version of this colour here and see how we get along with this. So I want to create a square grid. I don't think this is going to show up very well. It might be all right though. This paper's warped a bit with the alcohol marker. It hasn't um, quite dried yet, but it's fine because this is water-based. It's not going to be affected and my lines are going a bit wobbly and I'm playing with that as well there we go so I've, I don't know if you can see that grid it's very pale yes you can see it I'm just checking there and I'm looking at the Zentangle primer, primer primer for this and I think what I'm going to do 
I know what patterns I like, but I want something that will be quite geometric to go in here. So I'm going to choose So hard, so hard. I think I'm going to choose to do this. Oh, shall I? This is the problem, there are just too many nice patterns here. Y1 or M1. I know. Neither. So I'm going to put a cross in each of my squares. Even where there's not a whole square, I'm going to imagine where the centre of the square is and fill the cross in the best I can. Like so. And because the paper's curled with the alcohol marker, it's never done that before. I just suspect it just needs to dry because it's expanded with the solvent, I would think, in the marker. Oh, that one could have gone up there. It's fine. That I'll disguise that. Oh, dear. Deary me. Uh, that'll do fine. Okay. Um, okay, okay, which one was it I was going to do? I've lost it. Oh no. Oh yeah, um, Y3. So I need to go back to these and I'm going to draw a cross in the middle of them that is about half the distance, you know, You've got a triangle here, so I want to start in the middle of that triangle and stop there. So we're going to do this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the corner of each square and join the cross back to the corners. So I'm getting a kind of star happening in here. My mistake actually informed me of this. And it is very subtle. The um, colour is very subtle. But I actually quite like that. So you can see that I'm getting a series of... Um, of these little stars. So I need to create my crosses in these ones. In fact, this is beginning to flatten now, this section is drying. I think this mistake there will disappear mostly. Well, I hope so. And then let's corner to corner to each of these points. Where well, you can't see where the cross would be, you just imagine it. And it'll work fine, it always does. In the shadows there it's not so critical because nobody will see that. there that's where the mistake was and it's mostly disappeared so it's only somebody looking really closely at it or who knows for, to look for it will know it's there okay
And again here. There. And that's all of that done and it creates a lovely grid pattern. I don't know whether it's very clear on here, but I can see it quite clearly. And if I show you the, the basic grid, and I'll do it in black on this, this piece of paper I'm trying things out on constantly. I've got lots of bits of paper like this lurking. So you start with a square, diagonal cross, about halfway in each of the triangles, draw a line. So you've got this kind of pattern, which would look lovely on its own. It looks like um, some upholstery pattern. Then you join the ends of this cross in the middle to the corner and you end up with this kind of pattern. So I'll just do it again quickly. In fact, if I put them side, actually, if I do it side by side, excuse the squiggle underneath, you can see the kinds of shapes that they make. So we put the cross in, diagonal cross, horizontal, vertical, vertical cross that's half the, you know, starts halfway up each triangle as it were. We join corner to corner, or like this. And we get this lovely kind of pattern. And you can see there's these shapes forming between the squares. So if I put another two squares in, I can very quickly do this. Once you get in the rhythm of it, it's not difficult to do. It's not a pattern I reach for often, but whenever I do this, I always think how lovely it is. But you get all of these repeating patterns and shapes and it becomes very dimensional, so it's going to be fun to add some colour or um, shade, you know, shading texture to, which I can do, but not now. So I'm quite happy with that. Okay, up in this section before I finish today, because I will finish very soon because I'm, I'm looking at my time. It's 20 to, 20 to 11 nearly. So I need to go and get some more tea and something to eat for breakfast. Let me just make these lines disappear here. I said I'm dotting the gel pen on. If, I, if it goes over the black that's already there that I want to keep, that's not a problem because I can come back and sort that out afterwards. So you just go over it with a black line again and it just kind of covers the white up. But I'm tapping this rather than colouring in as you normally would because it doesn't disturb the underlying colour as much. And I may need to leave this dry and go back over these just to, especially with the, the pinky purple because the alcohol, not the alcohol, the gel pen is picking that colour up. But you can see they've practically disappeared, which is lovely. On this one here, while I've got my gel pen out, I think, what I'm going to do is where I've got all of these points in the, in, these are where the original diamond, this is where these original squares met. So uh, where the squares meet and you've got a lot of lines coming together, that's where I'm going to put some little white dots perhaps, or perhaps some gold actually, that'd be quite nice. And I have got gold somewhere here. Because gold is, oh, it's not there. So it's in a different, oh, where have I put the gold now? <laughs> It'll be in here. It's fine. I'll find it, hopefully. Nope. This is daft. Nope. Yes. There we are. Got it. Okay. So this is a Signo gold. Um, it's got a finer point than the jelly rolls. So, you might be able to see where there are darker points on here. I'm just going to go and put 
a gold dart where they are. And that also brings out the grid-like nature of this pattern. And I can see that I need to put some here as well, because that's where a lot of lines are meeting. And along the edge as well, there'd be one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. Um, there'd be one there, there won't be any others. But it just brings that lovely grid out and perhaps helps to make sense of it. So you can just see the gold hopefully catching the light. I'm not sure if you will. Let's have a look and try a different direction as I peer over the top of my glasses. Yeah, there we go. So there's just that flash of gold there. And you can see perhaps that pattern a little bit clearer. I have done it very pale because I wanted it that way as to be a very subtle patterning on what is basically the floor of this design. I'm not going to do the same patterns here because I want this to feel like this is quite lower down. So I may come back and add more shadow around with that darker alcohol marker. Um, but I'll do that at the end. Here I am so tempted that's the pearl, to actually colour this in with this pearly colour as well. Um, I do feel it needs something here, but I think I'm going to stick to where these lovely, um, just the purple lines are within those and use those as the boundary for this colour, because I think that way it will look like we've got a window through to another layer as well. And I think that could work here. Well, that's my thinking anyway, whether it's actually what happens. I could make a complete and total mess of this. But it's all part and parcel of the process of learning. You have to try things out to learn whether they're going to work. And also, it's not giving up. At, the, at a particular point. I've learned that if the worst comes to the worst and I really don't like what I've done here, I can get a black marker out, colour it all in black and then use a white gel pen or a metallic gel pen or um, you know, one of the Jelly Roll Moonlights in a colour that I you know, will complement this down here to add a pattern on the top of the black and that works perfectly fine. It's not as good as starting off with everything as it needs, you know, in the colours you'd like it to be, but it does work out just fine and dandy. I'm not going to get this finished in this video, but I am going to, oops, I went outside that pink line there, which isn't a problem because I may be put, well, I am going to be putting some shadow under there. So, but I've also got my colourless blender, which magically um, makes things go away. You know, that's a bit paler down there, but I will, that will disappear, even if I have to use white, white gel pen, which I'm unlikely to do. I am likely to use colour on these um, auras and borders and so on. So I've got this here. In fact, I think I might take it out to the black because that would make a bit of sense when it comes to adding shadow. So let's do that. And yep, I'm going to do the inner bit of the, the, the bee as well. And those circular flowers, I'm going to do those as well. we go. So do this one and I, again I'm going to, oh I didn't want to take that one right to the edge, oh well. It's done now so worst comes to the worst I can always use white gel pen around the whole rim there. So that actually helps the bee to stand out doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to go 
with some shadow around, well, let's go around the whole of it. So if I'm using Zentangle principles, whereas I normally think of shadow as being to the left and bottom, here let's think of it as part of the pattern. And I'm also going to take it round the inside of this shape. Trying to keep it the same thickness-ish. And I will be going back with the lighter pen to help to blend it out a bit. So we've got this and I'll do the same here around the outside and I'm also going to put it on the inside here where all of those little um, beads were. In fact I think I might just come in around the edge of the these here and because this is the wettest I'm just going to do this one first and I want to put some of the light in the middle. The nice thing is that with this lighter pen it will act as a bit of a bleach, a bit bleachy and it will bleach the colour out. I can see here where I've gone over the line. Um, I'm going to see how that looks once I've finished this and see whether I need to do anything there. I may not need to, it may work out fine just as it is. So. So essentially I'm trying to get these to blend that little bit more around the edges and not have such a harsh line. Now there is no highlight here yet and I haven't worked out how I'm going to do that. I don't know whether I'll want to use um, a white gel pen to add some. I don't think so. I think I might use a let me have a look I've got one here and I should have somewhere oh, where is it have I got a clean one I've got a clean end on that one cleanish I've got some oh, it's going to stick to the dampness but let's have a look and see so I'm putting a fair amount of white chalk or white charcoal, isn't it? Around the middle here. So I'm being quite heavy handed with it. And then I'm going to use a cleanish tortillon, paper stump this is, just to blend it out and to work it into the paper. And that then is giving me that, actually that's worked quite nicely I think. I suspect it's going to be more subtle to my eyes than it is on the camera. But the blending out really does help and it has given that that kind of feeling of dimension as well. So there, that's worked. And then I can do the same on the tips of these, I think, just to bring those up and perhaps a little bit in the middle just to give that a bit of highlight there as well. So, job's good. One. So that worked, that's worked quite that's worked really quite well. I'm quite chuffed with that so far. So I say, it's over an hour I've been recording, so I'm not going to get this finished in the time I've got. Um, so I do have to be somewhere else. I've got a bit there I need to sort out. But I'm really quite happy with this and how it's worked out. I may figure a way of putting some highlight on this, but I quite like the subtlety of it and the flatness that's there. There's little bits of gold. There'll definitely be little bits of gold going here at the ends, I think, of the stamen that little spattering of it and I'll work out what I'm going to do with these and everything else later on. So I'm just going to say thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has given you some ideas, given you a start of something to do as far as letters are concerned and um, I look forward to seeing you again in my next video. When I finish this I will put a picture of it up in the community tab and there's always a link to the community tab in the description now. All right, so I shall see you again soon. Until then, look after yourselves and find time to 
be creative. Bye-bye for now. Bye.